part of the iCare Plast project, the team at Imperial College is investigating the upcycling of plastic wastes by pyrolysis. This presentation introduces the technology and some of our work so far. Polystyrene, polyethylene and polypropylene are among the most used plastics, and consequently they are a significant proportion of plastic waste. Here they are shown in their pristine forms. Chemically, these plastics are long carbon chains, consisting of a repeating unit, which is shown here for each of these three polymers. The number N of repeating units can range from a few hundreds to hundreds of thousands. For example, we can see here what the structure of polyethylene looks like. Corresponding long-chain structures can also be drawn for polystyrene and polypropylene. Low-density polyethylenes can have a few thousand carbon atoms, while high-density ones can reach up to around 300,000. These materials can be shaped into very different products for a broad range of uses. Some typical daily-use products made of polyethylene are shown here. Similarly, polypropylene also gives rise to a large number of products used, and so does polystyrene. However, by the end of their useful life, these products do not look so shiny, and a proper way of disposing them needs to be found. Rather than dumping them away in landfills as part of iCare Plast, we aim to develop a technology that transforms them into useful materials once again. Pyrolysis is at the core of this technology. It consists of exposing these plastic wastes to high temperatures of the order of 400 to 500 degrees Celsius so that the chemical bonds that compose these long molecules begin to break. This generates smaller molecules that are recovered as a liquid product. In order to carry out the pyrolysis process, the material is first shred into small pieces, which can be handled more easily. After the material decreased in size, it is loaded into a pyrolysis reactor. This picture shows the reactor used in this project at Imperial College. It consists of a stirred section where the plastic waste is loaded, a furnace that provides the high temperatures needed for melting of the plastics, and the pyrolysis reactions, a discharge line for the products, and a condenser to recover them as a liquid. The liquids are the largest product fraction recovered from pyrolysis. In our experiments, it accounts for over 80% of the original weight of waste, with smaller variations depending on the fraction of each polymer fed to the reactor. Gas is also obtained, as well as a relatively small solid fraction, typically below 5%. We analyzed the solid and found out that it mostly contains inorganic impurities present in the plastic waste. In iCare Plast, we are mostly interested in the liquid fraction, and therefore we carried out further analysis to understand what molecules it contains. For this, we employed standard analytical chemistry tools available in our laboratories, such as liquid and gas chromatography. This analysis shows that the long chain that forms the polymer has been converted from several hundreds of thousands of carbon atoms to a few dozens, most typically of around 15 carbons. The products include alkanes, alkenes, aromatics such as benzene, toluene and xylenes, collectively known as BTX, and styrene. The aromatic structures such as styrene and benzene mostly originate from polystyrene. Polypropylene tends to form alkenes and some aromatics, while polyethylene produces alkanes and alkenes. These compounds that are all in the liquid produce from the pyrolysis of mixed plastics. The liquid products can be used as fuel, but they can also be the source of valuable chemicals. Styrene is in demand to make new polystyrene. Alkanes and alkenes can be used to make benzene, which is a key building block in many chemical synthesis. An example is the synthesis of alkyl benzenes, which have applications as detergents and lubricants and are one of the main targets of eye care plast. These products have many applications and can achieve high market prices, which therefore provides us with an economic incentive to recycling. So with the help of a pyrolysis process, we are able to convert plastic wastes into valuable products and contribute to achieving a circular economy.